You know when you are sad breakfast and you play slow music because you are sad? <laughs> then you'll be writing the sad parts because <laughs> <laughs> the, sad, the girl's name was Jockey. <laughs> she, 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 I still remember. Full disclosure. Ah, very, very high high jockey. Like, I had malaria, I had typhoid, I have every, everything together. Beautiful people of the world, welcome to the Blue Bow Pod, brought to you, of course, by Golden Morn. I'm your host, BB Ray, and on the Blue Bow Pod, we dish out on topics near and dear to each and every single one of our hearts. Now, I can't do it alone, can I? Joining me today on the Blue Bow Pod is Moji Bade. She's an award-winning television presenter and also a compare. Welcome! Hi, BB. I'm Hi. so happy to be here. Thank it's you for having so me. It's so good to have you here. Welcome. Thank you. Also... Joining us today on the Blue Bowl Pod is relationship expert, coach, I guess you could say. Mm, yeah. An all-around good guy. It is Cookie Pishang. Yeah. Ah, I like that. You see? Pishang. <laughs> I, had to, I had to give it a bit of... Uh. Like that's it. That's, yeah. it. That's, what, that's the punch. Yes, it really is. Now, if you guys are wondering why there's all this amazing, as my grandma calls it, Mede mede. Mede mede. <laughs> but all these beautiful garnishes and toppings, we've got strawberries, grapes, and apples, and so on and so forth. It's because today we're going to be talking about something quite interesting. It touches you, it touches me, hmm. it touches everybody. <laughs> and that, of course, is the topic of chopping breakfast. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, there is the, uh, you know, metaphorical breakfast. You don't cast. Last, last. <laughs> Everybody go chop breakfast. Yes, but then there's also the real breakfast the that real we must thing. chop to keep mm -hmm. us going throughout the day, <laughs> yep. right? Mm -hmm. So today, that is what we're going to be talking about, guys. Are you ready? Super. Absolutely. Okay, Super. let's get on into it. So I do want to ask you to kick things off and be honest. Okay, have you absolutely. ever? Okay, have you ever served? No, yeah, serve, first. serve. Of being served. Have I served? You've served and then you've received. You've chopped it. But yeah, yeah. Both sides. Ways. Yes, yes. <laughs> I need Absolutely. details. I feel like ah. I need to hear your story. Would you rather go first no. now? Oh, you were, you, already, you already started, so let, let's journey. hear you. I need <laughs> yes. your energy. So, yeah, so I've, so I've served breakfast, yeah, in my younger years. I mean, growing up um, as a young man, the hype is, you know, you evaluate your masculinity by how many girls you can break their hearts. You know? wow. Yeah, trust me, man. A lot of guys get that. So, going from teenage years, I mean, there was home training, but then... You, you just kind of lose your own training. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So it's about this girl, that girl, this girl, that girl, you know. Um, I remember um, the first guy that was teaching me how to toast girls. It was quite older than me. You had and a it coach. Was, it was like, yeah. <laughs> and it was like, just tell her you love her. Just tell her you love her. And I'm like, okay, but I don't even like her. I just, I just feel her. Just tell her you love her. So I started throwing the words around and young girls would do it. Ah! So yeah, I was having multiple breakfasts. But then... Now got to the point where they served me breakfast. Awesome. I love it. Oh my Damn. god! I love it. Oh I want to know one thing. When, where, how old were you? You know when you are sad breakfast and you play slow music because you are sad, <laughs> then you be writing the sad parts because <laughs> they served me. The girl's name was Jockey. <laughs> she, 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 my oh, hi, Jockey. I still remember. Full disclosure. Ah, very, very high high Jockey. Jockey. Like I had malaria, I had typhoid, I have everything, everything together. My mom took me to the hospital. The doctor said there's nothing wrong with him. It's a broken there's nothing, heart. Oh my god! It was my brother that knew that it was a girl that was serving me breakfast. So he now reached out to one of our friends and was like, Omo, you don't keep a scene for it here. Tell this girl that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so she now sent me a message like, hi, hope you're feeling better. I got the message like this. All the malaria vanished. Oh, oh, goodness. All the <laughs> <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was, yeah. That was my first experience with um, breakfast. That's when I realized what I had been doing to mm. people's daughters, mm -hmm. you know? And, but then I know that same coach, that guy that was older than me, <laughs> he now told me, so at that time I thought that, no, this is it, I can never move on from this. You know, I was in my 20s, early 20s. And he was like, you've not met one third of the people you meet in this lifetime. Like, hmm. there's still so many people you will meet, right? Hmm. And she left me for London boy. <laughs> London boy came back, you know, the guy had been toasting her for then, the guy came back and the guy took her, took her stole her away from me. Yeah. Anyway, so that's one lesson I learned, right? So in growing up and now becoming a relationship coach, I realized that you will always find love again. Aww. No hmm. matter how hard a breakfast is served to you, you will always find love again. Look, we're human beings. A part of you might be yanked away from you because you are so emotionally entwined with this person, but you will always grow again. That's how God designed us to be. So, 
Let me leave that one now. Yeah, that's quite powerful. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> the idea of, you know, because I think a lot of the time when we go through heartbreak, mm -hmm. it's more so, oh my gosh, where will I find somebody ah, that understands? How do yeah. I start? Yep. How will I start, start again? Am I going to start with your favorite color? Yeah. If <laughs> one more person asks me what my favorite color is, I have none. <laughs> okay. <sighs> you know, how about you? So tell me all about your breakfast, um, your serving, your chocolate. Have I served breakfast? I know you have. You look like a You look like ah. You're judging me. Ah. I both of you are judging ah, yeah. me. I pick. But unfortunately, I'd like to announce to you that I have actually served breakfast. <laughs> Shock. <laughs> I've served breakfast. Oh my God, I actually feel bad now thinking about it because I think with the same measure <laughs> that I've been, as I served, I've been served in multiple folds. Yeah. But yeah, um, it was after NYC. Was it after NYC? Yeah, this. Hmm, person might watch this thing, gosh. <laughs> and then I was just like, oh, that I'm going for my MBA. I've not even written GMAT. I just needed the guys to leave me alone. I was done, but it was not going anywhere. I was like, oh, I remember I went to Santalizer's then. I was like, oh, then talk to you about something that I'm traveling in a few months, no, next month, and I have to go. And you know, this thing is not, I, I can't do long distance and every, every, but I did not go anywhere. You were dead. I was here in Nigeria. Yeah, <laughs> I was just not there, I was just not ready. <laughs> but my own first breakfast that was served, I mean, I, I think that was light. I mean, I said the very light breakfast. That was, that I was mean, not, that, that was not, that, yeah. But he well, could have been in love. He was. Ah, ah so it was light to you. It was light to me. To be fair. Woman, ladies and then <laughs> this man, one man like that, <laughs> served me premium huh? platter. Premium. Pla that was my first one. This guy, he was so sweet. Mm. When the breakfast came, he was even sweeter. <sighs> Goodness, like that thing broke me into pieces. And I feel like it kind of affected me for a long time because. He was all so sweet, and then the breakfast came. Like I became a poet when this guy, when I was in love, I'll be writing poems. Yeah, me, so I used to write poems. Every, you know, love is sweet when it's this one. That they've been doing things you can write music. Me, you. I was writing <laughs> lyrics, <Yeah. laughs> and then breakfast came and it shattered me. But it was horrible. It was quite horrible. Yeah, I mean, roses are red. Mm. The blue ball. Part it's still is red. Blue. Are they still red? <laughs> ah, it's broken. Yeah, that, that is blue, but but we learn to move. Of course, <laughs> of course. When it comes to breakfast, I think everybody has definitely yep. you know served, chopped. You should be served breakfast. It's I think it's part of. You need it. People, trust me, you need it. You need it. My, one of my younger cousins was served breakfast a couple of months ago. A girl and she just just think I was just like yeah you need to learn this lesson early in life it's good don't worry it's part of wow. human growth. You but you know to... what? It's character development. To be honest, it's character development. <laughs> I think, I think my, my last yeah. breakfast helped me become a better person. How many I became strong. Why you say my last breakfast? About thirty. <laughs> It's like two, three dozens now. If I start to count, if I start to count, do you see where my eye don't Easy see? Enough, Abby. No, no, okay. no, I'm not gonna lie. Ha, if we really want to talk about breakfast, serving breakfast, chopping breakfast, Same. honestly, everybody has yeah. been on the receiving and on the dishing out end too. But I want to ask you guys: Do you feel like where you are in your life, whether you're a student, whether you are a young professional? Whether you're maybe ready to get married, do you think that it, it determines the kind of breakfast that you serve and also, I guess, chop? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Um, chopping breakfast as a student, I mean, you've not really seen life. Then, you see, the thing is about chopping breakfast when you are, let's say, you're not much older is that there's a past record, right? right? Now, there's this ex, that ex. Um, those experiences affect the current relationship where you are served breakfast. And it's like... We, we become more, when you're young, there's not so much memory to tap into. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, about breakfast is, they kind of tell you a story about yourself if you are going to learn from it. Sometimes you have to realize that maybe you're attracting the same type of people. Okay. Maybe you're going for the same type of people. You understand? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we go for what we don't like. That's the complex thing about dating, about relationships. How does that work? Yeah, that works. So let me give I you- I think we go like, for what I, doesn't like us sometimes. What? But we don't like what doesn't like us, but we'll still go for it. Okay, if I get into <laughs> philosophical here. <please. laughs> okay, so let me, so back, let me break it down. Back. So I, I, I experienced this with women a lot when I coach, right? Um, some women are in a maybe abusive relationship, okay. right? Then they leave, or the guy will even leave them on top of this guy was the one abusing her. Then she gets into the next relationship, then history repeats itself. Hmm. She doesn't like that. But maybe growing up, maybe that's what she was used to. Maybe that was what she was seeing daddy do to mommy. Yeah, maybe that, love, yeah. Right. All her aunties went through it and she doesn't like it. And she has sworn that she's not going to experience that she, as much as she can choose. But then she grows up and she keeps going for those kind of guys. 
Why? Because the brain likes what is familiar. Mm. We call it the comfort zone, but it's really the familiar zone. Wow. Our brain, yeah, so, so the human brain is very complex. It's the familiar zone. The brain just wants what it can predict, even if it is not the best for, you. for the, yeah, exactly. So your mind will always, most of the time, want to mislead you. If you don't stop it and just evaluate things over and over again. So going through breakfast in your later years, if you look at all the breakfasts you've been through, you might start to realize that there's a connection somewhere. And this thing is trying to teach me something about myself. Mm. And the earlier we learn, the better. So there are so many people I get to coach that. I will now ask that, okay, what about this? What about this? What about this? They just tell them the story casually. And I start to show them the patterns. That can you see this? Can you see this? And until they realize that, oh, even though I don't like it, I keep going back to the same thing before they now I'll make a change. Wow. Okay. I, I hope think, I broke that down as simple. I think I you really simpler. did. And I the thing that came out. Yes, I have to figure a couple out of things. If I've been yep. following pa- um, familiar paths. Yes, and yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. We all do it. We all do it, human beings. Because we, yeah, unconsciously. Mm. And because 95% of what decisions you make in life is run by your subconscious, man, not your conscious. Right. You see, we're intelligent. Oh, yeah, but, you're, <laughs> but the tiny part of you can, it's only 5%. Right. You know, wow. rare. 95% is emotional reaction. Absolutely. So I think the most important thing before before you start dating and opening yourself up to meeting other people, mm-hmm. is really to know yourself. That's it. I think that's that is it. You can't yeah. give what you don't have. And you know? I think it comes with age. I mean, not necessarily. Mm. I feel like for me, there are certain things I can't take right now. Before, when I was dating, mm-hmm. oh, well, I'm sorry. Well, yes. <laughs> um, well. You know, there are things where there are things that you would see. I mean, you say a rat, and you say maybe it's a cockroach. Yeah. Those excuses you make yeah. now, yeah. you can see that. It doesn't work that way. Mm-hmm. Right. Call it what it is because yep. it'll come back to bite you. you Absolutely. Get? I've made excuses for someone who, you know, I think at the third month of the relationship, you know, there was just, oh, we're just dragging, stringing. Yeah. And we went on to the 10th month and I knew that this person was, had checked out. <laughs> right. I but I was just there, you know, just saying, you know, maybe making it. But right now, no excuses. I'm sorry. Like, Absolutely. when I see a rat and I smell it, I'm like, that's a rat. That's a rat. Not a, not a roach. <laughs> it is a rat and we move. Like, no time for that. So Absolutely. I think we, you grow over time with your experiences, yeah. with that's the it. breakfast, the nutrients you're so, giving you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. character <laughs> development. <laughs> it's essential. So, so the breakfast is heavier when you're older. Of course. Of Do course. you think so? so? Oh, yes. yeah. So, okay, yeah. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that actually the breakfast is heavier when you're younger. Ah. Why? Because when you're younger, you're loving... Foolishly, you're loving without any boundaries. Love- you don't know what it is to love yet. You know, when you're older, you get a little bit more cautious. You start spotting things. So like, okay, be rats. Again. So on, to- be like, you- on exactly, top of all this lesson exactly, where I don't learn for my life, exactly. I don't the, you just I'll feel check like that. I mean, you feel like I've been used and I don't have yeah, sense. Like, why true. did I do that? How did I fall yeah. for this again? True. And I think when you're younger, yeah. it's a bit. You know, you can get to, you can move on easily. You're exactly. still, you're still a softy. Yeah. But as you build more experience and you eat more breakfast. Yeah become tougher. So when you're younger, you're going to be like... When you then get heartbroken on top again, of that toughness, ha, then it hurts you even, even more. more. You're like, how did I find myself so, here again? So, so when you're younger, you could be like, oh, I was immature. Right. Oh, I was inexperienced. Mm. But now you're yeah, mature. Yeah, experienced. Yeah, experienced. But so they still serve you breakfast. <laughs> it is that you you're emotional. Chop. You're an emotional being. And when yeah. our emotions are in play, or more with the blind, love is blind. It's a very factual statement. Uh, you no, know not those, anymore. Oh, more, no, don't wait. say not anymore. Oji. <laughs> My okay. But you know what? With that being said, love is blind, not anymore. Do you feel like dating in this day and age is more difficult than it would have been? Honestly, let's even say 10 years ago. Let's not even go yes. further back. Yes. Dating now is is intense. Hmm. It is... Intense in what context? In, in the, the fact that we are not doing the work we should be doing. Okay. We a lot of us are not doing the emotional work we should be doing. Mm. I was going to say that... Because I was going to say that men are lazier now. I'm sorry. Like, and women you know, too. I don't. No, no, no gender oh, work. Yeah, but it's women not gender, too. No gender <laughs> work. You guys are not putting in the work. But, but Do you know what I work. think that that is though? Everybody has options. The internet, in particular, mm-hmm. I think, has just completely widened the dating. Option pool. is on. Of the option that most of them is bangang. I mean, <laughs> but you know, oju kokoro. That's kokoro, what yes. they say in your so, band. Oju kokoro is basically like, yeah. you know, you see mm-hmm. everything, you want a little bit of this, a little bit of mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. And that's pretty much what the internet opens you up to. So yeah. if you are a person without, if you're a person so that doesn't control. really have control or the spirit of contentment yeah. and mm-hmm. discipline, yeah. no, no, yeah. it's going to be a free-for-all. And that's, I think, what we're seeing happening and manifesting now. People are finding it a lot more difficult yeah. to settle down mm-hmm. because one little thing Just and whew, mm-hmm. ready to walk away. Yeah. But I mean, that also brings us perfectly to the next like section of this whole conversation, mm-hmm. which is, of course, red flags. 
So how do you know if that one little thing is actually a big thing and the red flag is going from green to amber to red? I think it's just dependent on you. Hmm. So right now, there are certain things I can't tolerate anymore. So I was dating someone, you know, we're talking, and this guy used to literally watch me on my Apple Watch. Like, he'll be monitoring my movement. Where did you go? Where did you not go? Uh oh. And then when I say, why well, didn't we? Like, no, oh, no, you stood up at 2 a.m. and you Uh-oh. walked for five minutes. Yeah. <gasps> initially, initially, I thought it was cute. No, no, not because it was not as toxic. Yes. yes. I'm like, oh, this person cares. But after a while, like, no, no, you're telling lies. At 12 a.m., you stood up for five minutes and you sat and you. That is a red flag. Very big. That red is flag. a controlling and obsessive human being. Yeah. That will marry you and lock you up in the house and nobody will see you. Literally. And, you, and for someone, for the kind of work I do, that is a no, no for me. I mean, I'm out there. I'm in the media space. Yeah. You, get, you can't tell me I can't at- attend after parties when I host an event. I'm like, I want to connect with my clients Absolutely. beyond hosting their events. Like, no, you have to go home. You can't be talking to people. Excuse me. That's, oh. a, that's a bloody red flag. That's not just a red one. A very bloody, bloody red flag. When you, now, as, you, as I'm older, of course, I'm like, nah, that's not attractive. Yeah. No way, I'm not doing that. Right. Yet, no. So obsession, nah. control, mm-hmm. over, you know, control. It's crazy. How about yourself, red flag? Yeah, um, I think we always see signs of these things um, when you just meet someone. and But the thing is, some things can seem like red flag or can seem like, oh, what's this? But then in the long run, it might not be anything too bad. Do you understand? So, I don't understand. I think I need you to elaborate. <laughs> <No. laughs> it's because if it's no, a red it's, flag, it's, if it looks like a red flag, it smells like a red flag. What is a red flag? Go ahead, you tell you me. See, so, so, can't tell, I mean. so, you see, that's not, it's a delicate balance now because mm. some people will just run away because, oh, I just met this person. We're going to, oh, but he does this or she yeah. does this and, and I'm gone. But True. no, you know, it's just the fact that they're two different human beings, right? And well, you can't blame those people who immediately run away because maybe they've been there doing that. How many times do you want to like, run? But you, as, as as long as you, until you find that person, you keep running. But there's no perfect. What is chasing you is the there's, red flag. There's no perfect you, person. There's no perfect person. But until you find someone who doesn't have as much red flags, of course, you have to make compromise at some right. point. Yeah. You just say, you know what? Okay, yeah. I can deal with this, but I can't deal with yeah. this. There's some things that you mm-hmm. cannot so, deal with. And once you spot those things, mm-hmm. you move. You can't stay there and be tolerating nonsense until it then blows up and you say, okay, but you know, didn't you see these things? Yeah. Yeah. She saw those things. Yeah. She just and chose somebody, to ignore them. Absolutely. And if somebody is demonstrating something from early, chances are as the relationship progresses, it's probably going to get worse. Yes. So if you're seeing something that you know is a real and true deal breaker for you, yeah. I would say it's probably best not to so, take so, so this is it, right? I've seen situations where people will identify something as a red flag. Uh-huh. They read up everything on internet, TikTok, everything, all these videos, mm-hmm. everybody, yeah. you know. And then... They start to focus on that thing and it expands in their True. perception. Like, oh my God. Like, for instance, now, a lady dating a guy, the guy has this nonchalant attitude. That still, to a certain extent, falls under how guys just don't pay attention to details. That's not true. It is so I true. I think we just like to... No, we don't like to... No, okay, no. Okay, I'm listening. Guys, I'm not a guy. Mm-hmm. But there, I've, I know guys who are so meticulous. They mm-hmm. listen. They uh-huh. pick the... Well, the seemingly little absolute, things. Absolute. You say this and they notice it. Like, oh, for me, I think this. a man will pay attention if, if he, he cares. Wants to. Oh, the same yeah, man who's saying, mm. oh, I'm very like, like, like a desk cow. He's the same man who would go all out when he finds a woman he really loves. Absolute. And I'm talking out of anger oh, uh, because I'm, I'm seeing two people in my head. <laughs> Vim. <laughs> Vim. <laughs> But, but no, so I don't think men don't pay attention. Default I think they no. just choose when, when they, they want to pick. They, they're the, very selective. Men, Absolutely. you know, oh, even that man, man that pays attention, when he finally gets that woman, he will not pay attention. Well, most not guys, all the time. a larger but percentage, that, most common case scenario. It's the same way I know some women who, when their man tells them something, they'll just take it like that. They won't bother him. Oh, that thing guys call peace of mind. She doesn't question him. I know some women that do it, but many women don't do it. Many women will look into the details, they will, right. do, they will do that. I know women who, their husband will forget their birthday. And she'll be like, do you know, do the girl like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. She'll be like, okay, I know you're a man. And she'll let it go. But I know a woman that they forget their birthday. World War II. Can never be me. You know but meanwhile, if you forget your guy's birthday, mm. most guys, he won't even, you won't even, is it not singlets we've been getting? And, and no, boxers? no. I, yeah. Majority, well, come, on case in, come on case scenario. <laughs> no. Come, no, I've gotten plenty, plenty gifts. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Many boxers uh-huh. and singlets too. <laughs> you know, but, but common case scenario. I'm going to have common case scenario. So there are guys definitely that can pay attention to detail and other things. But the major percentage of guys, if you leave them in their relaxed atmosphere, they really are not bothered about details. You forget his birthday, he will not disturb you. It will have the tendency maybe to forget your birthday or forget that you mentioned something that you would like. Or, you see? Some guys are mind readers. You say, before you say you're hungry, he knows you're hungry. You say, oh, let's go out and eat. He knows where he will take you to that. Well, where are those guys? Because that's what I'm at. 
There is small percentage. Because <laughs> yeah, you yeah, where they at the relationship ah, coach? Can you oh, tell yes. us where they are? Give ah, us the Google map. Oh, Let's find them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Show us the way. Show us I'll the give way. You the, 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 the code. I feel what? like being intentional when it comes to relationships is very, very sexy. I think there's it nothing more sexy. That but a guy that. that does not pay attention to detail can also be seen as a guy that doesn't care. That's the mistake now because he can care, but it's just guys when they're default settings. Trust me. So that's why I said red flags. If you now focus on that, you're not looking at Tinuke that her own friend, her own guy is paying attention to details. I no, know, I know, I know a lady that a, a what you man. Want. You see, okay, fine. Yeah, like is, is it right. is it important for Did, me if my husband, my boyfriend pays attention to details? If it's not that important, right. then it's fine. Yeah, but for me, mm-hmm. my primary love language mm-hmm. is quality time, mm-hmm. and in that quality time, you're paying attention to what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Right, like. There was a guy I was talking to, and then I think I'd said something in passing. Mm-hmm. And the next day he brought it up. Mm-hmm. Like I was in was... love. Like <laughs> I was, just, it was something I just said randomly. And fire. he had gone to Google yeah. something, and brought yep. details, and I was yeah. like, oh my God, I will yeah. marry you. Yeah. yeah. But I did not marry you. <laughs> class, class. I want to ask, did he serve you breakfast? Or, no, no, no. Or did no, you no, serve him breakfast? No, no. It's just. I'm still talking. Oh. <laughs> That's in the talking, See you at the wedding. Talking is going to love. <laughs> it's going. The talking is going. going. So, 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 really, this thing about red flag, like I said, mm. it's a very delicate thing because there might be some things you like about the guy that doesn't pay attention to details. There mm. might be some things he does, right? But, so, I think that's where communication comes in. Okay, okay. communication. So, no, no, but, <laughs> that's, that's, but as a relationship, no, what I don't you, like the most no, but you in must, relationship if, if, conversation like is communication. Now, we if have you just, like some things about him, but then you spot some red flags, mm-hmm. talk to him about it. Like, I don't like these things that you do. Right. And it makes me uncomfortable. If he then changes, if he says, okay, you know, I can work on it. But if he doesn't, then it's that's a red flag in Absolutely. itself because he's stubborn So what if he stuck. works on it, but, you know, because it's really hard to change as adults. But I think but that that's how change. Make, make change. Well, what, what if there are some they things do. he's telling you and you're not working on? But but, yeah. so again, again, it's, obviously, again, it's a change cannot thing. happen overnight. You know, yeah. I think in relationships, it's important to acknowledge that your partner is at least trying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For me, I think that's the most important mm-hmm. thing. Mm-hmm. If I bring something to your attention, I want to know that you've taken it on board. Yes, it's not going to be a complete 180 overnight, yeah. but I want to see that you're doing something towards, you know, what I said, and you're trying to at least make me happy. And I would like to say I'd do the same thing. So I like all this romantic angle, but, <laughs> but this your, your, your face no. is not matching what you're saying. I swear, no, let's because, get, because, because I, think, I think the communication aspect is something we need to really start discussing the way it should be discussed. I think we're not discussing the way it should be Help discussed. Us, How should it be discussed? Okay. okay. <laughs> Women are terrible communicators. Not all I women. I agree with him, low key. Good. But not all women. But I, I think I see what Two, you're saying. Men are also terrible communicators. Period. <laughs> Three, human beings, when they're emotional, communicate from a very narrow minded place. Mm. Right? And men and women communicate differently. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. Now, women, you guys are the ones that you think. He should know. He should just know. He should just know. I don't want to have to tell him. I feel better when he because does Because you guys it. sometimes say we nag when we just let you know that, okay, I don't like what you're doing. You say, oh, she's well, always nagging me. Even if it's just a simple correction or a simple, oh, I don't like that you well, The one that is not correction too. Sometimes yeah. you just expect him to just know. Yeah. Right? Majority of women. I know somebody can say it's not all women, but we're talking about a common case scenario here. So majority of women just, exp- they like it when their guy can read their mind. Right. That definitely means that they are not great communicators because you expect your man to be a mind reader. Right? Women talk a lot. But because you talk more, does not mean you communicate better. Who says we need to talk the most in a relationship? Is the woman. Ah, where are you? We need to talk. Exactly what will end up being done. We will talk, but are we communicating? Right. The first thing I want both men and women to realize is that we communicate differently. Yep. The earlier people start learning to listen to what is not being said, the faster that. There are a lot of friction that people hmm. get that is not is supposed not to be there. Said. said. Yeah. Absolutely. So... So we have to address communication in a different way. We think because we sit down and we talk for two hours, we we can communicate, but we might not connect. Absolutely. At all. We might not connect at all. Because I'm just... communication, connection. Yeah. Yeah. Communication. <laughs> you see? But absolutely, so, I think you're totally right, though, because you can speak to somebody, but not communicate. True. Yep. Communicating is, I think, giving and receiving information. So and understanding. And understanding. So you First, listen understanding to your partner. More. Understanding it. Um, they'll say seek to understand before you now ask to be understood, right? So you go in there, if you really want to communicate, you're going to first hear where the person is coming from. You can just say, oh, where they took the left turn instead of the right turn. Mm. 
But when you go in there because you want to get stuff off your chest, yes, you will get it off your chest, but where are you putting it? Right. Yeah, that's the thing. So we need to address communication. And the reason why people just like to just touch communication and stuff is because to really communicate, you have to start from yourself. Right. Yeah, you have to restrain yourself. That's it. So. All right, so it's time for Blue Bowl Picks. It's a little game that we like to play right here on the Blue Bowl Pod, where I'm going to hand you over a bowl hey. full of plenty, plenty questions. And the aim of the game is for you to pick out one of the questions, you read it out, and you, yes, you at home watching, <laughs> you get to head on over to our social media, comment the correct answer on the latest post, and be with a chance to win some amazing goodies, because I know you like freebies, because <laughs> I like freebies too, okay? Of course. So go ahead, girl, go ahead. Okay. And pick out a question. Magic time. Yes. Let's do this. <laughs> random, random. Where are golden one grains sourced? The question again. Where are golden moon grains sourced? Over to you, my audience. All right, there you have it. Make sure to head on over to our social media to comment the correct answer to be with a chance to win some amazing prizes. Okay, guys, obviously breakfast literally touches everybody. Mm -hmm. Anybody can chop breakfast. Beyonce! chopped breakfast so obviously nobody is excluded <laughs> our from beyonce. our queen can you imagine on beyonce's internet anyway at least i know that with golden moon the breakfast that i chop at least it's good for me yes yeah. and it fills me up yeah it keeps me going that's some comfort right here it doesn't break my heart <laughs> mm -mm. make me did. start singing and talking shakespeare <laughs> Make, makes me happy makes me happy i actually love golden moon yes sir <laughs> Well, it has been a jam-packed show right here on the Blue Bowl Pod. We've spoken all things chop breakfast, serving breakfast, receiving breakfast, <laughs> emotional unavailability, you know what I mean? <laughs> and of course, the various stages of dating as a young person, as a, you know, ready to get married person, expectations, so on and so forth right here. It's been amazing having you guys it on has. the podcast with me. Thank you so, so much for your contributions. You, it has been incredible. Is this you wrapping up? Yes. Okay, no. We have to have breakfast. Oh, how could I forget? She wants breakfast. I do. I'm going to serve me breakfast. The we good breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> it is Yay. time for the breakfast. You know, it's very, very... Thank you so much, producer. Thank it's very, you. very rare that somebody's actually looking to be served breakfast, I must say. It's the real one. It's the real one. It's the correct <laughs> one. It's the one that will keep you going throughout the special day. Breakfast, like, yes, thank so special, you. special breakfast. Anyway, while they, you know tuck into the breakfast. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you so much for tuning in on this amazing episode of the Blue Bowl Pod. I'm your host, BB Ray, and it's been great having these two with me, you know, discussing all things chop breakfast. Make sure to catch you next time. Bye. Hey, Charles. It's so hot, Auntie. You'll get used to it. What's the big deal? It's just a cereal. Just a cereal? You are talking about something that has helped thousands of Niger farmers provide for their families for decades. This cereal, we have enjoyed it for so long. It's part of our history. <laughs> Is that you? And it's packed with the energy and nutrition that I know my family needs every day. That's why Golden Morn is so special to us. You get it? Keep enjoying Niger's favorite breakfast cereal, Fortified with Grain Smart, a special combination of iron and vitamins to help your family make every day golden. I get it now. Nestle. Good food, good life. Do, do, do.